Indiana, home of the Hoosiers with its love for basketball, it hosts the greatest spectacle in racing, better known as the Indy 500. It also hosts one of the more dangerous juvenile correctional facilities in the nation. The facility? Pendleton Juvenile Correctional Facility. Let's get into it. We must always remember that juvenile facilities should be focused on rehabilitation instead of retribution. The juveniles house here will be returning to our communities and deserve the best chance to succeed. We'll take a look at the area surrounding the facility before moving on to its history and current programs. We'll then finish by highlighting some of the incidents and newsworthy juveniles at the detention center. Pendleton, Indiana is a town of almost 5,000 with a classic Midwest feel. Its red brick buildings line the main drag. It looks like any other small Indiana town. Located in Madison County, it has an extremely flat terrain, most of which is devoted to agriculture, with corn and soybeans being prominent crops. U.S. Route 36 cuts through the town, which runs west to Grand Junction, Colorado, and is over 1,400 miles in length. The facility is approximately 30 miles northeast of Monument Circle, the center of Indianapolis. This area has a significant history of involvement in corrections in Indiana, with two adult prisons nearby. Pendleton Correctional Facility is one of the most historic in the state and located just down the road. Infamous bank robber John Dillinger spent time in this prison. Also located nearby is the Correctional Industrial Facility, with its brake shop where incarcerated individuals refurbish brake pads. Pendleton Juvenile Correctional Facility is a maximum security juvenile facility operated by Indiana Department of Correction, Division of Youth Services. The mission statement for the Division of Youth Services reads, Our DYS mission is focused on community protection, accountability, beliefs that foster responsible community living, and competency development. Construction on the facility began in 1998 and was completed on July 5, 2000. It sits on 91 acres. Prior to this facility opening, juvenile males were housed at Indiana Boys School, which had operated for 133 years, quite a long time. The facility is built in campus style, with buildings separated by walkways. Unlike high security adult institutions, where movement can be severely limited, there are three housing units with a capacity of 96 beds each. Once a juvenile offender arrives, he will be housed in the 48 bed admission slash orientation unit. Just like adult prisons, juvenile facilities also require a secure housing unit for problem offenders. Pendleton's shoe can house 48 juveniles at any one time. Indiana DOC noted that the unit is for special management and behaviorally challenged use. An increase of juvenile males being sentenced to DOC and overcrowding at the Indiana Boys School led to a need for a new facility. By 2005, all juvenile males had been transferred to this facility, and the Indiana Boys School campus changed roles to a work release facility within Indiana DOC. The facility has a capacity of 391 juvenile offenders, although in 2021 it was only operating with an average daily population of 168. Also in 2021, the age range of the facility was 13 to 20 years old. You may ask why a 20 year old is at this facility. That's because a juvenile sentenced to DOC at 17 can be under their jurisdiction until 11.59 p.m. the day prior to their 22nd birthday. Any juvenile from Indiana's 92 counties can be housed at this facility. The facility employs 240 staff who may have direct contact with the juvenile offenders. The facility is secured with a single arched, some call them anti-climb fence, with a 24-hour vehicle patrol on a perimeter road. Like most correctional institutions, there is a clinic, visiting area, and chapel. Teenage boys need exercise, and for that they have baseball diamonds, volleyball courts, basketball courts, and a quarter-mile walking track. There is a school on grounds, Providence Junior High School, that provides education services. The facility offers numerous programs to help the juveniles succeed once they are released. We'll touch on a few that are offered across all Indiana juvenile facilities and a couple solely offered at Pendleton. The Why Try program is a brief solution focused treatment with a strength based approach. Why Try helps youth overcome their challenges, achieve positive goals, practice life skills, and develop plans and support for re-entering their community. They are also offered substance abuse treatment called Mindful-Based Substance Abuse Treatment. This program is an evidence-based 12-session curriculum geared toward adolescents involved in the juvenile justice system that promotes self-regulation, decision-making, emotional awareness, drug use, and self-esteem. 
all in an innovative language relatable by justice involved youth. Lastly, Pendleton offers a unique boot camp and scouts program. It is Indiana's only paramilitary and therapeutic boot camp. The scouts program is sponsored by the Boy Scouts of America with counseling staff trained as scout leaders. In 2019, Department of Education Secretary Betsy DeVos visited the facility to promote and observe a coding program, part of a push for second chance education. Before we move on to notable incidents and noteworthy juvenile offenders, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy this content. We know that people are victimized in prison by their peers. In 2007, Sean Helmig was convicted of touching another resident of the facility in an inappropriate sexual manner. What made this different was that Helmig was 19 years old at the time. He was completing a sentence at the facility due to an arson case. Due to his age, he was sentenced as an adult to a two-year prison sentence, with an additional six years on probation. Since that time, Helbig has been in and out of prison due to firearm charges and failing to register. He is currently incarcerated at Westville Correctional Facility, with an earliest possible release date of September 12th, 2026. In 2016, two offenders escaped from the facility. Justin Bruner and Logan Osborne, both legal adults at the time of the escape, ran through the visiting area, climbed a fence, and over a building before running off. They were apprehended shortly after. Due to their age, they were charged as adults. Not the smartest plan. Osborne would be sentenced to five years in prison for the escape. His time in prison has not gone well, earning numerous additional battery cases. Osborne is currently housed in Westville Control Unit, a maximum security segregation unit. Bruner is also in prison at Putnamville Correctional Facility, but this was due to a new firearm-related conviction in 2019. Unfortunately for these two, it seems they did not take advantage of the programs offered at Pendleton Juvenile. Possibly the most infamous juvenile at this facility is Paul Henry Gingrich. Gingrich, along with his friend Colt Lundy, shot and killed Lundy's stepfather and stole his car. They were apprehended in the vehicle not far from the crime scene. Lundy, 15 at the time, was tried and convicted as an adult. He spent his time in an adult facility. Gingrich arrived at Pendleton Juvenile in 2007 and was released in 2017. Although he was also tried and convicted as an adult, the youngest ever in Indiana, as part of an agreement he was allowed to serve his time in the juvenile facility. Pendleton Juvenile Correctional Facility houses the most serious juvenile offenders in the state. Due to confidentiality laws, most of their names and crimes are unknown. Let's hope they take advantage of the programs offered at this facility to better themselves and stop the cycle of incarceration before it begins. Let me know in the comments if you think Pendleton is providing the necessary tools for these young men to be successful once they are released. As always, see you next time.